afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kelly McDonald with Detail Roofing, and today we're going to be talking about spring roof inspections and maintenance. Uh, for anybody that hasn't taken part in one of our presentations before, at the end of the presentation, we will be having an open Q&A. However, if at any point during the presentation, you do have a question that you don't want to miss or forget about, please feel free to pose it in the chat and we will address it at the end of the presentation. So uh, in talking about spring roof inspections and maintenance, uh, the objective with the presentation today is to provide you guys with uh, the knowledge of under understanding uh, to help get a better idea of what is happening with your roof and how it can affect other areas of the building uh, and overall to reduce any reactionary spending and thus limit stress and headaches from dealing with major roofing issues. So for starters, what comes to mind when you think of roofing? Uh, something that comes up often if I'm telling people that I work at a roofing company, uh, especially if they don't have anything to do with buildings or condos, their immediate perception is uh, somebody reshingling a single family home. Uh, a lot of the times though, even when we're talking to property managers who do often have to deal with various roofing issues, uh, things that tend to be top of mind are either leaks and emergency repairs or capital projects. But what about maintenance? Uh, a lot of the times when we're talking to people, maintenance isn't necessarily top of mind, uh, again, because of the fact that they're often dealing with other issues, uh, whether it be capital projects or various leak issues. So what, what is it about maintenance that is important or even necessary for a roof system? Overall, having an annual or semi-annual roof maintenance plan in place is going to help to alleviate any reactionary spending. Uh, by completing regular inspections and identifying issues uh, before they become large uh, problems, uh, you're going to help to maximize the serviceable life of the roof, uh, minimize and prevent any leaks that may be occurring, uh, and maintain, maintain membrane manufacturer warranties. So anytime that a uh, roof is replaced, uh, you should be getting two warranties, one from the contractor who completed the installation and then one from the main membrane manufacturer. Uh, contractor warranty is going to cover any issues with the installation. Uh, the membrane manufacturer warranty would cover any issues with the membrane itself. However, in that, uh, in that warranty, there are many stipulations. Uh, one of them does state that regular maintenance does need to be completed in order to maximize the life of the roof system and maintain the membrane warranty. Another thing to consider is that the roof is covering the entire building and its contents. So ensuring that it is in peak condition and that any issues are being addressed promptly is going to help minimize costs in other areas as well. Often through inspections, uh, we are able to identify issues that may become leaks or other problems, uh, thus saving costs on interior damages from leaks uh, through the uh, checking the drains uh, can prevent plumbing blockages in the drainage pipes from debris buildup, uh, can help out with HVAC repairs from corrosion and any is issues with the windows or building exterior. Uh, with condos in any sort of building too, uh, there are so many areas, especially this time of year when it's kind of spring cleaning is top of mind, uh, where maintenance inspection or testing is being done. Uh, so as you can see here, we have a long list. I know there's many more things, but just some of the main things that are being maintained or inspected regularly. And what would happen if these areas weren't addressed, if they weren't being inspected or maintained on a regular basis? If the roof is neglected, then issues will arise faster and the membrane or waterproofing system is not going to last as long. Uh, something that we often liken it to is a vehicle. Even when you have a brand new vehicle, after a certain amount of kilometers, you need to start bringing it in for inspections and maintenance. Otherwise, that vehicle is going to break down and is not going to last as long as it was intended. The roof is very similar where if you're not identifying these issues, they're going to become larger problems 
problems and you're going to have to replace the roof sooner uh, than originally anticipated. Uh, depending on the type of building, there's also many times where through regular inspections or just completing regular walkthroughs, uh, you're able to identify potential leak issues before they become a larger problem um, and hit the inhabited part of uh, the interior. So whether it's through the mechanical rooms, boiler rooms, if there are any signs of staining at the roof deck uh, or any areas where daylight is visible, uh, that can be a sign that there's something happening on the roof where it could uh, create a potential leak issue. Uh, general rule is if you can see out, water can get in. So when it comes to the times of years that you should be completing any inspections or maintenance, uh, there's no specific rule on when you should be doing this or uh, the right time necessarily. Uh, however, it is recommended that the roof is at least inspected uh, on either side of winter. So in the fall, just to ensure that uh, there no, are no major issues and that the roof is well equipped equipped to withstand the winter season. Um, and then right now in spring to check the overall condition and see how it held up over winter. So what is it about winter uh, that's so harsh that we need to be checking in and seeing what has happened to the roof system? Um, because of the climate that we live in here in Southern Ontario and the fact that we are experiencing some form of winter for the better part of six months, uh, this can add a lot of stress to the roof system. Uh, what we tend to see in that uh, season is a number of fluctuating temperatures uh, going from freezing uh, freezing cold temperatures to mild temperatures that can cause membrane to expand and contract. Uh, harsh weather and different storm systems that we see throughout those months, buildup of snow and ice, leftover leaf debris from the fall, uh, even in situations where a uh, complex has had uh, leaf debris cleared from their gutters, sometimes we do see uh, additional debris left over in the spring. So all of these things throughout the winter season can equate to splits and cracks in the membrane uh, from those fluctuating temperatures. Uh, the temperature fluctuations can also cause a lot of stress to any uh, roof flashing and roof penetrations, um, blockages at the drains, any fallen branches or heavy debris, uh, especially in townhome complexes where there are a lot of trees uh, surrounding the roof surfaces. Um, and then a big thing that we see in the winter season is ice damming. Uh, one thing that we would recommend if you do have ice damming occurring uh, at one of your buildings would be to complete an attic inspection just to identify any ventilation issues that may be causing the ice damming to occur. Um, however, also checking the roof in the spring to determine if the ice damming caused any issues to the roof system. Uh, generally what we see are some issues with the eaves troughs, as well as uh, the buildup of ice causing water uh, to back up under the shingles, uh, which can cause leak issues and just damages to those lower shingles. Um, another thing about right now in the spring uh, and why it would be a good idea to have roofs inspected is because this is generally a pretty rainy season and this year is no exception. So throughout the month of April, we have had a higher than average rainfall, which is expected to carry on into May. Uh, and it stands to reason that higher volume of precipitation does equate to more leaks. So when having a roof inspection completed, uh, especially this time of year coming out of winter, some of the key areas to look for and address if there are any issues. One of the biggest ones is ensuring that any of the drainage is clear. Uh, so no matter what type of building you have, if it's a high rise, low rise, townhouse, uh, no matter what type of roof system, it's all going to have some sort of drainage. Uh, so making sure that the drainage system isn't blocked by any debris, vegetation, foliage, or gravel ballast. Uh, otherwise, if it is blocked, then it's going to affect the overall function of the drainage system on flat roofing that can lead to uh, roof flooding. And if there are any issues occurring, whether at the drains or in other areas, uh, that can definitely lead to leak issues. 
Um, in situations where there's vegetation growth occurring, uh, th that vegetation, the roots can also puncture the membrane, whether at the drain itself or in the membrane surrounding the drain. Uh, so if the vegetation is not carefully removed and is puncturing the membrane, that can, of course, lead to leaks as well. Um, so some of the actions that may be required related to the drainage would include ensuring that they are clear and free flowing, removing any debris uh, or foliage that is built up at the drains, um, checking the membrane around the drains in the cases of flat roofs or at overflow scupper drains, just to make sure that it, it hasn't deteriorated, there aren't any damages occurring, um, and there's no weak points where water could potentially get in and cause an interior leak issue. Um, with flat roofs, uh, the inverted roof system that have the gravel ballast throughout, um, we do recommend installing gravel guards, uh, just a perforated metal around the drain uh, to help try and prevent any debris or the gravel itself from blocking the drainage and allowing the water to flow freely. So one of the leading sources of water ingress that we see uh, is anything to do with roof penetrations, whether it's something that is penetrating the surface of the roof or any of the exterior walls. Uh, you want to make sure that these areas are watertight at all times, um, otherwise it can present a leak issue. So some of the things that we see most commonly have to do with the seal at the base of the um, penetration like we have in this photo here. Uh, there is some deterioration that's starting to occur. And you can see there is a slight opening. Uh, there is a hole where that opening is occurring and corrosion occurring, uh, which did present a leak issue in this case. Uh, any cases like this where there are any openings where water may be able to get in, or if the flashing has become damaged, if there are small holes or larger holes, uh, then those would be situations where you would want to get that flashing replaced um, to stop any leak issues or mitigate any leak issues. Um, other things that may be helpful at roof penetrations could be applying a compatible liquid detailer or liquid membrane just to seal and re reinforce those bases. Uh, depending on the type of penetration, if it's a conduits coming through the roof or something similar, then an EPDM wrap, which would just be EPDM membrane uh, with hose clamps to help seal and reinforce it, um, or a pitch pocket or gum pan. Again, just another type of roof flashing to uh, reinforce and ensure that area is watertight. So with roof systems like this that are flat uh, and you can see the membrane when you walk out, whether it's a two ply SBS roof system or a tar and gravel roof system, it's fairly easy to identify issues uh, when you're just walking through the roof and uh, completing an inspection. It does get a little more difficult with uh, inverted or green roof systems where the membrane layer and the bases of these penetrations uh, are not visible when you're walking out onto the roof surface. Uh, in situations like this, we would recommend adding to your regular maintenance the inspection of the bases of penetrations um, just to identify if there are any issues going on, whether at the membrane layer uh, where it meets and roofs in the penetration or with the actual roof flashing itself. Um, again, this is a very common leak issue that we see where corrosion is occurring or deterioration is occurring at the membrane um, and causing interior leak issues. Um, what we would recommend in this case would be to expose the bases of penetrations. Typically, this would be in phases, beginning with areas that show any signs of deterioration um, or just a certain section of the roof and inspecting for any damage or deterioration. Um, and then it's going to depend on what the findings are. If there are situations like we have here where there are perforations in the flashing or deterioration at the membrane, then repairs or replacement of that localized area may be required. Um, if there isn't any major damages occurring or if it's just um, starting to deteriorate, then what may be recommended is applying a compatible liquid membrane, again, to seal and reinforce those bases.
Another area that we can see uh, some deterioration through the winter, especially with temperature fluctuation, uh, are any areas where sealants like caulking are being applied. Um, so there are a wide range of uh, different types of caulking available. And of course, with uh, exterior caulking being applied on roof surfaces, uh, they are made to last for many, many years uh and withstand various weather events however like anything they are going to break down over time uh, so just monitoring the caulking throughout the building whether it's at uh, roof flashing metal flashing seams or any other areas uh, once it starts to get to the point that it is brittle and splits and cracks are occurring uh, that can be of course another area where water can get in uh, and cause a leak to the area below. So uh, if the caulking has gotten to a point uh, where it is split or it's starting to become brittle and looks like it's going to split soon, we would recommend applying new caulking after removing the sections that are deteriorated. So again, on uh, inverted roof systems with the uh, gravel ballast insulation and filter fabric, uh, we come across situations like this all the time where uh, whether it's from a lot of foot traffic uh, on the roof system or from a project that uh, the last person that was up there didn't put everything back properly, uh, we come across situations where the roof system is exposed and uh, the layers of the roof system are displaced. Very commonly with this roof system, it's generally a uh, liquid membrane below all of these layers uh, that is not UV resistant. So if that area is left exposed, uh, it is susceptible to uh, damages from UV rays, especially heading into the summer. Um, so having the areas, uh, if they are exposed, before having everything put back, first inspecting the membrane to ensure that there aren't any damages occurring or any deterioration from prolonged exposure, uh, and then reseeding all of the different uh, layers of the roof system. Depending on the condition, if the insulation and filter cloth has become damaged or has deteriorated from prolonged exposure, it may be recommended to install new filter cloth or new insulation uh, where it's not reusable. Uh, so rusting throughout the roof surfaces, whether it's at uh, units, vents, or gas lines, uh, this is something that we do recommend uh, monitoring and addressing once it gets to a point that it is severely rusted. Uh, often if we see situations where uh, rusting has been happening for a long time, it does get to the point where corrosion is occurring, and then we start to see leak issues. Um, in a situation like this, where it's just at a unit, this would require another contractor to come in and uh, do a replacement here. Um, if it was a situation where it wasn't that severe, uh, there are different coatings that can be applied uh, just to renew and rust proof those areas. Uh, with the gas lines, there's a yellow uh, rust inhibiting safety paint uh, that should be applied once rusting is occurring uh, just per WSIB standards. Um, this is also something that if there is rusting occurring at units or vents, especially if it is towards the bases, that might be a good idea to look at the bases of those penetrations to identify if there is any corrosion or rusting occurring at the base that can't be seen that could lead to a potential leak issue. Uh, so again, regardless of the type of roof system, whether it is a flat roof, uh, high rise or if it's a townhome, any areas where there is missing, damaged or detached metal flashing or metal siding, uh, especially coming out of the winter months, it's something that we tend to see pretty often due to uh, the various storms that we experience and just uh, less foot traffic throughout the roof areas uh, where you would have somebody be able to identify if there was something happening. Um, so depending on the severity of the issue, uh, there are some cases where the metal just needs to be reattached. Um, in other cases, it may need to be removed entirely and have new metal flashing installed where damaged. Um, a lot of times, especially in high visibility areas, people are jumping on this and dealing with it right away because it can be such 
a massive safety hazard. Uh, however, there are certain areas where you might not be able to see that damage, that there is damage to uh, the metal flashing, especially on uh, townhomes where it's the metal fascia along, um, similar to this where it's along uh, the top of the roof and it might not be visible unless you're actually on the roof surface. Uh, so again, after winter, just making sure that any of the various storms that have occurred uh, haven't caused any items to go missing entirely. So some of the missing items that we come across most often are uh, drain screens and vent caps. Uh, so again, not having a drain screen in place here is going to make it more susceptible for blockages to be occurring at the drain, uh, which can again impact the overall drainage lead to uh, ponding water throughout and potential leak issues if there are defects in the area. Uh, with the vent caps, uh, again, you don't want it to lead to a water infiltration issue uh, or a pest infiltration issue. So identifying if there are any missing areas uh, throughout the roof and installing new hardware where it might be required uh, is a good idea to address as soon as possible. Uh, and finally, again, just because of the harshness of the weather and the weather fluctuations, we do tend to see uh, a lot of issues arise in the spring, even if uh, a roof inspection was conducted in the fall. Uh, there are situations where splits and cracks and various defects may have occurred over the winter uh, that you want to have addressed as soon as possible before it becomes a leak issue. Um, depending on what type of membrane system, uh, the repairs are going to vary. So if it is a two-ply SBS system, like we see here, uh, and there is a lifting seam occurring, uh, it could be a situation where you just need to reheat the open membrane and apply a compatible liquid membrane to seal. Uh, in all other cases, depending on the membrane, supplying and installing new compatible membrane or compatible roofing materials to uh, repair those damages and mitigate any further leak issues. Uh, one thing is this membrane that we have down here is a single ply TPO. Uh, similarly, if we see any situations with an EPDM membrane or vinyl membrane, uh, we're not seeing these as commonly in condos. Um, and if we are, it's typically on um, balconies or lower canopies. Um, however, these membranes in our experience are very susceptible to uh, damages and thus uh, leaks. So we do come across situations where even when we're completing inspections and identifying these areas, uh, they pop up very rapidly throughout the year. Um, so in these situations, it's just about completing inspections as often as possible and trying to repair these small damages before they become leak issues. Uh, so something to keep in mind is that maintaining the roof is something that is recommended for all roof systems. It's going to offer benefits and maximize the serviceable life of all roof systems. So just looking at some of the other roof systems a little closer, uh, when it comes to shingled roof systems, I know there were a few areas that related to slope shingled townhomes, uh, but just in general, even if the shingles are in good condition, there are other areas throughout the townhome complex that uh, you may want to identify and address. So any localized shingle damages um, or areas, again, if there was ice damming occurring throughout the winter, um, checking the lower edge of the roof system to see if there are there is any deterioration or lifting of those lower shingles. Any uh, missing or damaged vents uh, that can cause leak issues or pest infiltration, uh, checking the soffits, eaves, troughs, downspouts, and fascia, uh, similar to any high rises, just inspecting for any rusting at the vents and ensuring any deteriorated sealant is renewed if it has gotten to the point uh, where it could, could become a leak issue. Um, metal roof, similar to the single ply membranes, is not something that we see very often with condos. Uh, if we do see them, it's again typically at uh, canopies or pool houses. Um, metal roofs, though, uh, 
really phenomenal roof system, definitely one of the longest lasting. And it's great because it does require minimal maintenance overall. In a situation where you do have a metal roof in place, some of the key areas that you would want to inspect on a regular basis would be the metal fasteners throughout the roof surface, uh, just to ensure that they are both in place and in good condition. Uh, commonly what we see is uh, the fasteners will begin to rust. And once it gets to that point, we would recommend replacing it with newer fasteners so that it's not going to become a leak issue. Uh, just taking a look at the seams to make sure that there's no issues there. Uh, there are different uh, products that can be applied just to seal and reinforce the seams. Uh, similarly, with any roof penetrations, same as any other type of roof system, it is a very common uh, leak issue if it's not adequately sealed yeah. and watertight. And then just ensuring any rusting at unit vents or the roof surfaces themselves are being addressed before it gets to the point of corrosion. With green roofs, uh, again, this is very similar to those inverted roof systems with the gravel ballast. Uh, the membrane layer is below multiple uh, layers of the roof system. Uh, a lot of the times with green roofs, the question that we are being asked is about the maintenance of the actual greenery. Uh, that is something that would require a landscaper. However, it's not just the greenery that should be considered with a green roof. Uh, it still has all the same uh, systems as any other type of roof system uh, and areas that you still want to be inspecting and maintaining to ensure that the roof system is going to last as long as possible. Uh, so again, just any penetrations throughout the roof system, whether it is vents, plumbing stacks, or uh, units, uh, checking that the drainage is clear, uh, especially in situations like this where there is uh, little spots of gravel around the drain. In this case, the gravel is completely covering the drain, so we would recommend having a gravel guard installed there. Uh, checking again for any rusting at the units and vents or gas lines throughout, um, and checking the metal flashing at parapet walls to ensure that it is secure in place uh, and ensure any caulking requirements are kept up with. All right, so that is all that we have for today. Um, if anybody does have any questions, please feel free to either unmute yourself or pose it in the chat. And also, as it says on here, I will just mention that for the month of April, uh, we are running a contest for any assessments that are booked. So any assessments booked by uh, next Monday, May 1st, uh, will be entered into a draw that we're holding for a $200 spot gift card. Thank you for attending, Brian. Okay, if nobody has any questions at this time, uh, I will send out a, an email later today. So if anything does come up that you want to ask about, whether about the presentation, about inspections and maintenance in general, or about anything specific happening at your building, please feel free to contact us and let us know. Um, we will also have a recording of this available if it is something that you want to watch again in the future or share with anybody else. Thank you everybody so much for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.